Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Tim Lee. I'm a research analyst at Red Cloud Securities. I'm delighted to host a, a Red Cloud webinar on zinc, lead, silver exploration and development today. Uh, we'll hear from Rowan Hazelton, President and CEO, Peter Portka, CFO, and Scott Fulton, VP Projects from North Zinc Limited. During today's webinar, they will provide an overview and outlook. Uh, then we will take questions. You can type your questions into the chat box at any time. Uh, we'll get to as many as we can. Before we kick things off, first, we need to discuss a little bit of the uh, fine print. Uh, during this Norzink webinar, forward-looking statements may be made. I would direct listeners to the company's forward-looking statements outlined on page two of Norzink's corporate presentation. That can be found on the company's website, norzinc.com. For Red Cloud Securities, Inc., I would highlight that this webinar is for information purposes only. It should not be considered a solicitation or a recommendation to buy or sell securities. We note that this call does not consider the particular situation or needs of individual investors. Participants should rely on their own investigation and seek their own professional advice before investing. And please see our most recent research located on the Red Cloud website for specific disclosures related to North Zinc. So I'll highlight the fact a little, a little on Zinc first. I'll highlight the fact that we have had several companies present uh, that are focused on various precious and base metals, but we've not spoken as much recently about Zinc. More of the focus has been on some metals involved in electrification and battery battery metals, as well as as well as precious metals areas. And so as a result, zinc has been a bit under the radar. Although metals markets are a bit royal today with uh, some economic concerns coming from China, zinc price has been strong and hovering uh, just a bit under a dollar forty a pound recently, uh, which is a, a good a good price. Uh, and there's a limited number of high quality zinc development projects in the market, and there will be a need for new zinc mines to meet future demand. With that said, we have Norzinc presenting today. Norzinc is focused on the development of its Prairie Creek project in the Northwest Territories. Prairie Creek hosts a high grade silver lead zinc resource that appears to have plenty of room to grow. And the company is focused on advancing the project toward construction. With that, I now turn it over to the folks from Norzinc uh, to update our audience on the company. Great, thanks a lot, Tim. And thanks a lot to uh, Red Cloud for, for hosting this webinar and thanks to everyone for, for joining. We're very excited to be here today to give you an introduction or in some cases an update to, to Norzinc. Um, First off, as, as Tim mentioned, you know there there is a lack of, of high quality projects, and and hopefully, uh, you know we'll, we'll show how how strong of an and significant high quality uh, project uh, Prairie Creek is, uh, and really a, a world class deposit. And and certainly my goal in in joining the company uh, in May is to advance the project to financing and and construction, uh, and really build a world class company uh, around this this world class mine. Uh, just briefly, uh, background, you know, 20, 20 years in, in the mining business uh, with 15 years at, at Wheaton River Gold Corp, uh, advancing through a variety of finance roles and ending at uh, VP Finance and VP Strategy in the last five years, advancing a number of juniors in the silver zinc lead space with Ascendant Resources and uh, and also Serato Gold uh, taking that public in February. I'm very excited to join such a strong team on a projects that very advanced with significant existing infrastructure, as you can see here in the photo, surface infrastructure uh, and five kilometers of underground workings. Um, I'll just turn it over to, uh, to Peter for a short bio of himself. Sounds good. Thank you, Ron. So my name is Peter Portka. I'm the chief financial officer of the company. By background, I'm a chartered accountant, chartered financial analyst, and I've been in the mining industry for over 15 years. I spent time with Sandstorm Gold. Uh, I split my time then as corporate controller and manager of corporate development, um, which is actually the place where I was first introduced to the Prairie Creek Mine as Sandstorm has a royalty on the asset. After that, I joined a multi-billion dollar private equity fund out of Houston, Texas, that's focused on streaming as well as operations. We operated mines in Mexico, Australia, and the United States. And an opportunity presented itself to join Norzinc. I was familiar with the, uh, with the asset, very strong board, strong management team, and I jumped on the opportunity to come and uh, build a mine. Thanks, Peter. Scott? Uh, sure, so I'm Scott Fulton. I'm the VP of Projects. 
I came on board with uh, Norris Inc. about two and a half years ago now. Uh, prior to that, I was with uh, AMEC or Wood for about 10 to 15 years. I'm a project manager, uh, been involved in EPCM um, for a number of years. I was on New Afton for New Gold for five years, all the way through the engineering, took over as the project manager and construction manager in the last year of that build, also involved in the construction of Rainy River and Bruce Jack for Predium. So um, very keen to come on board with this company and build it and take it from the picture that you see on the screen into reality here. It is shovel ready. We are good to go. And uh, we're going to get it built. So I'm, I'm really excited to be part of the team and to take this project forward. Great. Thanks a lot, Scott. Um, so just moving on to, you know, just a quick uh, highlights. Uh, you know, this is this, you know, really is uh, a world class you know, deposit in ore body with, with you know, significantly high grade. Uh, 25% zinc equivalent in in uh, uh, in resource uh, located in you know safe jurisdiction in Northwest Territories southwestern North NWT as you can see in the map there uh, you know with a long life and, and high margin and number of, of mitigated risks uh, to date uh, it is one of the largest uh, reserves of, of uh, undeveloped uh, zinc lead mines in in the world and certainly in Canada uh, and and as Scott mentioned it, it really is shovel ready. Uh, and uh, and it's permitted to fully permitted to feasibility uh, design, which is at 1,600 tons per day, uh, and and the access road. Um, again, other strengths of the project are you know very small footprint. Uh, we have a uh, the, the current design and plan is is a uh, is a uh, 100% pa uh, paste and backfill, uh, no tailings, and in, in, in a very small environmental footprint overall. Uh, you know the high grade, as I mentioned, it, you know really you know translates into to about a you know gross val metal value per per ton of rock of say seven hundred or four hundred dollars per ton U.S. NSR uh, and and strong margins you know you know hundred hundred fifty ish in in uh, per ton you know value of of rock and and uh, uh, you know it's it's a very homogeneous ore body which we'll, we'll go through. Uh, and a very, you know, very continuous and 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 uh, uh, with a, with significant you know, exploration potential. I mean, there's a few challenges that every project has, and and the two main challenges are are really uh, the the remoteness uh, of of the project and where it's located, um, and also uh, the um, you know, mercury content in ore, uh, which we'll touch on. Um, you know, recently since since joining the company. Uh, we've, you know, gained a lot of momentum uh, in the last quarter, and and uh, uh, we just announced that we're 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 working on a PEA on that 2,400 ton per day plan. Um, again, the the original fees was at 1,600, and actually the 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 um, the infrastructure you saw there is the 1,000 ton per day uh, existing uh, plant that was that was put in place uh, in 1980. It was 90, the mine was 90 percent constructed. Uh, in 1980, by the Hunt brothers under the Cad as Cadillac Silver Mine, uh, and uh, and these are you know the plans we, you know we now see as as 2,400 tons per day as being as being optimal. The company's been looking at that for for a year or so, uh, and we we're now launching a, a a PA in order to to get results to the market quickly uh, to to show what what you know uh, overview of of how we see the the mine and plan going forward. We've also began. Uh, just last quarter, the a permitting process uh, for that the the expanded permits, uh, which is really the site permits, it's it's not um, an impact on on the road. And we just uh, surpassed a, a major milestone last week by uh, receiving notice that we can proceed with the permitting process without a requirement for a new EA, uh, and and expect to get those permits in by by late uh, Q1 or early Q2 of next year. Uh, we signed a, a final uh, road benefit agreement as part of the IBA with with the LKFN First Nation in Fort Simpson, an MOU with Parks Canada uh, that is valid for five years, uh, raised uh, 7.2 million, led by Scotia and, and Paradigm uh, in in July August. Uh, we've appointed uh, Ormet as as financial advisor. Uh, to to advance our project financing discussions, uh, we continue to have the support of, of strong uh, shareholder in, in RCF. Um, just as I mentioned, I mean you know you know highlights of the project in, in terms of uh, metal content uh, over three billion pounds in reserve zinc and lead combined, or six billion in resource. And there's a very strong silver component. 
uh, 32 million ounces of silver in reserves, over 75 million in, in resource, you know, on a on a net revenue basis, uh, approximately, depending on metal prices, 40% uh, zinc, 40% lead and, and 20% silver, uh, or 20, 25%, depending on relative metal prices. And, and as I mentioned, 23 to 25% to zinc equivalent. Um, the, uh, you know, as I mentioned, of the, you know, the, the remoteness, and here you can see in the, the recent photo from, from a site visit in August, uh, the, you know, one of our challenges is, you know, that remoteness translates into, you know, an access road uh, that we need to build of, of 170 kilometers. Uh, the, uh, and that's, that, that does make a significant component of, of the initial capital. When the original uh, mine uh, or, or project was constructed, uh, the, it was brought in over a two winter road series. What we're looking at here is the, the, what was the, the road alignment, uh, at about kilometer 10, uh, through the McKenzie, McKenzie mountains. Uh, and then there's a number of, uh, of mountain passes to, to go through. So certainly I experienced firsthand, you know, some of the challenges of, of being in, you know, geographically, uh, at the site visit being two or three days delayed on, on site with, with weather. Um, um, you know, but we have a strong plan which Scott will, will go into for, for the all season road. Uh, as far as the mercury content in the ore and it, the, the, it is significant, uh, you know, compared to, and, and really compares, compares to parts of the world like the Iberian pyrite belt in Portugal and Spain, uh, uh, in terms of, of high, high mercury content. But with the work that was being done in the past, uh, by the company, uh, advancing discussions with with off takers and smelters, and and since I've arrived, uh, we've we've advanced those discussions significantly. With also with the uh, parties that have been in discussion before, Belieden, um, and also two other major uh, traders and 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 smelters. Uh, we do expect to you know to be able to announce you know, further information on that uh, uh, in the coming month or months. Uh, the you know what I would say about the the you know through our discussions you know we we firmly believe that that the zinc concentrate which is primarily where the the mercury reports to uh, is saleable uh, and that they're ready buyers you know of the names I mentioned you know it's oversubscribed you know to to 150 to 200 percent of of the production that that we estimate uh, but it does come at a cost and and that the cost of a sort of mercury charges and penalties are are likely. Uh, significantly higher than what was estimated in the past in sort of the order of, of three times, um, say in the order of $100 per, per DMT versus versus $30. But, you know, we firmly believe that, that there's a ready market and a willing market of, of buyers for, for both the zinc and the lead con. Uh, um, you know, as mentioned, just a quick graphic on, on where Prairie Creek stands relative to, to other undeveloped uh, zinc and lead mines. And, you know, considering the jurisdiction um, that uh, that we're in, I think it's a standout, um, you know, undeveloped deposit that, that we're looking to advance. Uh, just on terms of our strong commitment to to ESG and, and environmental principles, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very fortunate to have, you know, throughout my mining career, uh, you know, been working in organizations with a, with a firm commitment. I was pleased to join Nor Zinc and, and, and see that the management team and the board uh, you know, have a very strong commitment to, to how we deal with, with not only the environment, but communities and, and in particular First Nations. As you can see here, uh, in the photo, you know, we recently, you know, signed the, the final IBA I mentioned with the, the Lily Quay LKFN First Nation and in the center is the outgoing chief, uh, Jerry Antoine, uh, and to the left is, uh, Kaylee Antoine, uh, who was selected in, in August as, as the incoming chief. Also in the photo is Claudine Lee, uh, who joined the company in February uh, of this year as VP CSR. You know, she brings a wealth of, of experience and, and, uh, uh, and relationships in, in this area. She, she spent 10 years with uh, Dominion Diamond Academy Mine uh, in, in health, safety and, and environment roles uh, and has been a you know, significant uh, component of you know our recent success in in both permitting and and advancing community relations, so we're, we're very uh, pleased to have her as 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 part of the team. Um, as I mentioned also before, you know you know very small um, footprint in terms of uh, what we're planning for for the site. The current plant design has 100% water recycling. Uh, Given the remoteness, we don't have grid power, but but we, our plan is uh, is building a small. L 
uh, LNG plant, uh, which is certainly cleaner than the current diesel operations that we're that we're operating with right now. Uh, just in terms of of ore body and reserves and resources, you can see here uh, in the top left is the is the mine site. Uh, really, the access to to the ore body is I mean is straight from from uh, surface level. Uh, straight into into the ore body, and then there's a you can see the declines in the existing underground workings. You know, overall the mineralogy is is a uh, is is a carbonate replacement deposit of of uh, made up primarily of main quartz vein. Uh, and that's the that's the over over sixty percent of the uh, of the ore body uh, is is the MQV, as well as what you can see in yellow the stock works. Uh, and also strata bound uh, massive sulfides more to the bottom of the of the ore body. Uh, you know the current reserve um, of eight million tons uh, is is over a strike length of one point three kilometers, and and the current resource, including uh, the current inferred resource, uh, is another kilometer. And as we'll see, you know there is significant exploration exploration potential. Um, here you can just see. A, a quick uh, heat map of 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 the ore body. You know, so, you know most of the the uh, the ore body is well above the cutoff grade of eight percent used in the in the resource estimate, uh, and the reserve estimate was about ten to eleven percent. And 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 you can see that uh, it's not particularly sensitive to to cutoff grade, as 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 most of the ore body is significantly significantly higher than that. Um, Another visual of, of really the the exploration potential. You look at that just over two kilometer strike length uh, on the left. Uh, there has there there was one uh, primarily one exploration drill hole done to the north at two kilometers, uh, as well as uh, other um, uh, working um, trenching and other results taken taken uh, further north and and uh, and significant drilling also done to the south. But if you uh, looking at that two kilometers. So the North Shore Hall PC uh, 10 and 11, um, uh, the you know results are, are very similar. The mineralogy is very similar uh, uh, to to what we see in you know the current resource, and I think uh, you know it's it's a very very homogeneous uh, ore body uh, that you know there's a very strong you know indication that uh, the exploration potential over those you know those two kilometers. You know right now you know on a reserve life for 10 years at the higher throughput rate, but it was, well, it was 15 years in the original fees at the lower throughput. Um, but, you know, with a sort of total resource, you know, you're looking at a mine life closer to 20 years. And, and I would imagine, um, you know, that with the results that we see, uh, you'll see on the next few slides that, that you know, we would expect that mine life to, to potentially double. Um, uh, just another look here, you can see the ore body in, in the topography uh, to the left, uh, and really the the main port. You can see that we've got a 16 you know kilometer concession as as well as uh, across the the, the river, the, the uh, some other concessions uh, up to the to the northwest. Uh, and I'll just highlight here, just you know the 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 main. A uh, point I want to make on this slide is, you know, our existing resource, you know, is really in these two kilometers uh, here is defined defined here. Uh, that that further north drill hole uh, that we were looking at is is uh, drill hole eleven uh, up in here, uh, and there's really, you know, I mean, I mean, a significant amount of potential uh, in this. This hasn't been drilled uh, in the past, uh, you know, due to the the challenging topography here in the north, and as it dips down to uh, the ore body dips down, but to the south, and actually just across to the south is where the the original uh, discovery vein was made. Um, you can actually see it outcropping right from as as you come along Prairie Creek, uh, and and a significant drilling has also been done in the past. You know, to the south here, um, and you know, with strong results as you can see, um, and and just and for example, in this area of, of seven and eight, uh, in in the um, in the past, uh, there had been a historical uh, resource of, for example, 300,000 tons. So I think, you know, one can expect to be, you know, significant, um, you know, once a mine is up in operation, the ability to to uh, to come to the south of, of Prairie Creek and and uh, uh, and likely to, uh, you know, to be able to increase, you know, increase mine life to the south. 
Uh, here, just a visual of, of inside the, the mine. Um, you know, this is, you know, a good example of this of the main quartz vein uh, and, and, and how consistent it is. It typically uh, varies a width of three to five meters or average, average four meters. Um, the, uh, um, and, uh, and, and at a, at an angle of about 70 degree, uh, 70 degree angle. Um, and overall, uh, you know, the the ore body does lend itself to some relatively simple um, simple mining in terms of and, and lower cost mining in terms of long hole open stoping, um, you know, and as well as which we'll see here the you know the the plant uh, you know design you know is 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 relatively you know relatively simple uh, technology here as well. Um, yeah, I'll turn over to Peter for just a discussion on our. Yeah. Sounds good. Th thanks a lot, Rowan. So this slide highlights some of the key metrics from our 2017 uh, feasibility study, which was obviously done at a, at a significantly lower price than current spot. So zinc obviously is currently at around a dollar thirty-five, and silver is trading around twenty-two dollars, which is uh, higher than the amounts that are listed here. Also, at the sixteen hundred ton per day throughput, the expected annual production was around 95 million pounds of zinc, 105 million pounds of lead, and, and 2.1 million ounces of silver per year. Now, at the 2,400 ton per day throughput rate, which the company is targeting in its updated PEA, the following are some of the key high-level metrics, and obviously these are all preliminary um, numbers. So the concentrate production would be about 108,000 tons of lead and over 110,000 tons of zinc, which has approximately 62,000 and 65,000 tons of contained lead and zinc, respectively. So this would translate to average annual production, again, for the first 10 years of about 135 million pounds of payable lead, 121 million pounds of payable zinc, and 3 million ounces of silver per year. So those figures from a cash flow perspective on a 10-year average basis would be about $115 million US per year. So all of those obviously highlight the incredible scale and potential size that this mine has and, and why it's such an exciting opportunity right now. So I'll great. Thanks, Peter. Pick. Yep. Sure. Um, yeah, and, and as we mentioned, I mean, we have undergone uh, um, this this undertaking this this current PA. Uh, I mean, we'll let Scott just describe a, a bit briefly of, of what we're what we're looking at and going forward. Absolutely. So I, I just wanted to show here, you know, we've done a lot of work um, on the engineering over the last 12 to 18 months, really looking at how we can improve the economics, reduce the capex and also opex as well. So, you know, from uh, uh, the, the throughput that we've talked about, we're really zoning in on the 2400 tons per day is the optimal to drive the economics and what that does to the mine. Um, we've really taken a hard look at the uh, the upfront development costs of the mine and we have reduced significantly the cost going into the development for the 2,400 tons, which is really positive. Um, obviously the road, as Rowan indicated, it's, it's fundamental uh, to the logistics and some of the concerns that we have with our project here. And it is a significantly large um, part of the capex, but what we have been doing is we have been really focusing in on the cut and the fill and the quantities of, uh, of earthworks and mass haul over the last um, year, really trying to focus in on that. And we have done a lot of um, additional geotechnical work since the feasibility study was published. So in 2018 and 2019, we've actually got very positive um, news from the from the geotechnical information which we've been feeding into the design and therefore the quantities which has really helped us optimize and reduce down what we believe the cost of the road is going to be. Obviously we're also looking at um, um, concrete mining versus um, mining ourselves you know and we're taking a hard look at the contracting plan as we move forward here really looking at opportunities um, not only for construction, but also with equipment selection and procurement as well. So I just wanted to highlight, you know, we've put a lot of effort into this, uh, looking at optimize, um, optimizations that we can do. Great. Thanks, Scott. And, and you know, one area that uh, did touch on earlier, we just, you know, we did announce in our recent press release that we're advancing metallurgical testing, you know, primarily to to look, you know, most carefully at uh had further information on on how mer mercury you know re reports to to the various elements the various con concentrates a microprobe study that, that we're doing we expect results in, in early q4 
uh, and these will assist us in, in again advancing some of those discussions that uh, that I mentioned, and that's a key part of of advancing the project uh, over the next uh, over the next three to, to nine months. Um, uh, just turning back to our to our expansion and and uh, sure. to comment on a few details. So again, you know, part of the engineering has been updating the three D model. So I hope this gives you a sense. This is what the twenty four hundred tons per day plant would look like, and you can see we've got all the equipment in there. We are reutilizing uh, from the old mine, yeah. actually, some of the equipment. So in the lighter salmon colored, you can see um, you can see our, the mill on the bottom right hand side of the uh, the mill building there. That's the old thousand ton mill. So we're going to be reusing that. And um, the darker red color is the new equipment. So that's the new upper um, sized uh, zinc flotation cells, the scavenger, the cleaner circuit. Um, we've got the DMS, which is down the bottom, the big red building there, and we've got the, the water treatment plant as well. Concentrate loadout is to the left. That's the kind of central um, red area of the mill building there. And we've got the paste um, backfill plant in blue on the left there. So really, it just gives you a sense. We have looked at this quite strongly. All of the equipment there is sized. Um, accordingly, and you can see it all fitting in there nicely. It is quite a roomy mill building, so uh, we're pretty fortunate to have the infrastructure with that mill building that we have in place at the moment. Uh, we'll go to the next slide. So these, these are some of the shots. These are just two photographs of the internals of the mill building. There are two photographs here. I know it's quite hard to see, but the one on the left uh, shows you that that mill building, uh, the mill that I talked about, that's the old thousand ton per day uh, mill there. Um, and just in front of that, as we're looking um, northwards in the mill building there, you can see the, the scavenger cells. Um, the one on the right, you can see the flotation uh, uh, cells on the right there. This is down by the, um, the reclaim conveyor. You can see it on the left there as we bring the ore into the mill. Uh, but it shows, you know, the internals, it's, it's pretty clean mill, to be honest. Uh, the concrete is excellent condition, very, very good condition. Um, it was it was much over designed in the design phase. Uh, the structural steel is also very good. We have undertaken a thorough assessment of what we have to do to get it to current code, which is actually not that bad. Um, so it just gives you a sense. We have a pretty much full, full uh, mill building here that's very close to completion. Obviously, to turn it into where we're going here, we've got some a uh, number of changes that we have to do, but I just wanted to give you a sense of what it looks like inside the building. Um, okay, next slide here. So this is really talking about the construction of the, the all-season road, and it's going to be constructed over a three-winter, two-summer campaign. The first winter will be this upcoming winter, which we're calling the Pioneer Winter uh, Road, and it's really a trail to get us uh, through the 170 kilometres um, from the Nahani Access Road up into the mine site, and it's to allow us to conduct the additional geotechnical um, assessment that we have to do. So we'll be dragging ground penetrating radar across the length of the road, and we'll be doing some additional borrow pits, allowing us to get the final geotech that we require to get the issue for construction drawings complete. Um, and that will be followed um, in next year, around about September, when we get in and we actually start the construction of the full-blown all-season road, where we get into cutting and filling and looking at the embankments. Um, so this is the this is the layout here of the road. You can see it from the mine site, which is the uh, the purple um, star, all the way through to kilometer 170. And you can see the first 40 kilometers out to Cat Camp are really through the mountains there. Uh, we saw a photograph earlier in the presentation that kilometer 10, round about there, is what you were looking up through the mountains there. And the, the schedule that I laid out there, so once we get the, the Pioneer Winter Road out the way this winter, we get into the construction, obviously, of the a full-blown all-season road and part of that is we will be putting in two winter roads and the winter road going in um, on 23-24 uh, sorry 22-23 is the first one so that's the first red diamond here that is when we actually start bringing in supplies and equipment to get into the construction works which will be through the duration of 2023 again the, the road turns into another winter road. The following winter, we bring in more loads, which is the second um, diamond there, um, getting us into the, the final hurdle in the construction 2024. And the hope is that we're into production in Q4 of 2024 here. So 
we got a lot of work to do for the winter road. It is really the Achilles heel of the logistics and getting equipment and supplies in. And um, it, it's all about taking full use of these uh, the winter road when it's open. Now we've just been out on the winter road, uh, just been re-ribboning certain sections of the, the road, um, around about kilometer 100 to kilometer 40, that's 60 kilometers we needed to re-ribbon because during the engineering work that I've been talking about, we have tweaked the alignment uh, for our benefit. So we have got some changes to the ribbon and therefore the, the alignment. So this just shows you some of the sections of the road that we're looking at. Um, you can see the, the picture on the right there, that is the old, the road from 1980s, but you can see it's 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 pretty much um, in good condition, but it's been taken over somewhat. And like I said, we've been optimizing the alignment and we're really setting ourselves up to starting the PWR in the next months ahead of us here. Great, thanks, Scott. Yeah, so Scott obviously gave a very good overview of, of uh, you know timeline specific to to construction road and, and construction of the site. This here's a little more detail on some of the other activities that uh, that that uh, uh, that feed into that. In line with that, um, as mentioned, um, you know, working on the PEA and the and the MET studies to help us advance off taker agreements. Uh, winter road, and we expect, uh, as mentioned, permits in late Q1 or early Q2 next year. Um, in the meantime, again, advancing from the PA to advance on, on further engineering studies leading to updated feasibility level or feasibility document um, and, and also final offtakes in, in conjunction with project financing, which we're targeting of, of mid next year. Um, uh, and then and then following on the, the uh, construction and production schedule by end of 24, as, as Scott mentioned. So, um, uh, I guess just just sort of finally to to wrap up. I mean, again, we we've mentioned a number of of strengths of of uh, uh, of the uh, Prairie Creek project, uh, and you know this really is you know ready to to go shovel ready and and uh, to keep advancing on 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 getting to that that production commitment. The the uh, um, you know we as I mentioned briefly, we also have a you know very strong shareholder in RCF at forty you know forty four percent today. Uh, the you know we expect them as they have been in the in the last financing round to be a strong supporter potentially uh, you know lead order on on um, uh, you know on on further financings um, although you know potentially not uh, I can't speak for them but potentially not at not at the pro rata level um, but again at a strong support level as they've they've shown and, and as we get towards closer to uh, uh, to um, um, uh, to full project financing and the equity required there, um, you know, I would, I, you know, I'm hoping and expecting, you know, RCF to, to, you know, to continue to, uh, uh, to invest in the project. And we have two existing royalties uh, with the, the sand, original sandstorm that Peter mentioned and an and RCF royalty. Um, and we do, we do expect, you know, streams and royalties to, to like, you know, be a significant component of the, the capital structure along with a project finance debt. Uh, as we move to to uh, to a full project financing solution, so um, you know, thanks, thank you again to all for for your time, and and I guess at this point, turn it back to uh, uh, to Red Cloud to moderate any questions. Thanks. Great. Uh, thank you very much, Rohan and and Peter and Scott for a very informative presentation. Um, we'll now start the Q and A portion of this webinar. A reminder to everyone on the line that you can type your questions into the chat box at any time. Uh, we already do have have a few questions. Um, first, on the kind of on the drilling side of things, Norzink recently reported results from one drill hole. Why was only one completed? And do you plan to do more drilling to to try to upgrade the inferred resource? Uh, great. Thanks a lot for your question. The uh, um, we did have a drill um, campaign. Uh, plan for this summer that that was larger that was expected to be larger than that we did dr drill one and almost almost full two holes but we did have to to pull the hole with uh, with issues we're having both drilling and and with uh, overall with with uh, you know qualified personnel this summer as I'm sure many people you know are aware on other projects with significant competition for both you know drilling expertise and drill contractors uh, at, at during uh, the uh, the campaign we did go out to look to see if we could get either additional drills or additional expertise. And, and uh, as an example, we, we canvassed 25 
drill contractors uh, with zero having any availability of of, uh, of help or you know of personnel or, or or equipment. So, um, yeah, we're we're a little disappointed, certainly in in the in uh, uh, the amount of drilling that that we did do this summer. Um, as far as going forward, you know, you, you've seen on you know on the map some of the you know the targets that we do have. And our overall focus, you know, is certainly on on you know, development and construction over over exploration drilling. Uh, however. For, you know, with the you know the right availability of funds, there you know there's some you know there's some exciting targets that that we were you know are will look at, uh, and in particular you know I know that uh, this time of year and I, I understand there's you know very strong interest in flow through funds. It's something we will we would take a look at in uh, uh, you know in the near term uh, and look at and you know reexamine our our drill priorities. Sounds great. And one follow up question, I guess I would ask on that. Obviously the. There's some topography there. Does it get to be the end up pretty long drill holes to try to reach the, the ore body in there? Are there challenges with trying to get the right angle and, and kind of, uh, you know, kind of trying to drill drill further as it goes deeper? Yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll comment briefly and maybe Scott can add, although Carrie Cupid, who's our uh, manager of exploration, I'm, I'm sure would love to answer the question, but but then he's always available if uh, someone wants to follow up. Um, but yeah, you can see that topography, you know, uh, you know, getting, you know, higher and the altitude getting higher at the same time that the ore body is dipping. Um, and, you know, and there, and there certainly are challenges. I mean, one thing that, that offsets that slightly is, is from, you know, from just a straight kind of theoretical, you know, you know drilling point of view is, is the, the angle of the ore body being at 70%. And as you can see, you know, extremely consistent, especially the main quartz vein, um, you know, typically, you know, you know, once you, you know, it's it's a lot easier to to hit. Uh, um, you know, typically, and that's you know, I'm, the figure that Carrie's given me in the past that it, you know something like, you know, is a ninety five percent hit ratio on this, you know, on on this uh, drilling in, in in the Prairie Creek ore body overall, given given those angles. But the the topography certainly adds to it. As far as you know, other drilling other than that kind of two kilometers out or a kilometer out that are, that is challenging that we would like to you know undertake would be. Um, you know, both drilling at the fringes of what is currently the inferred resource to, you know, to, to show some of the expansion of that, uh, as well as potentially drilling, you know, within the inferred resource to be able to upgrade that category. Again, the hole we just did, you know, had a, had a small, you know, would have, had, will have a small impact on, you know, uh, like that on, uh, we expect on the, the upcoming resource, but, but again, at, you know, a very modest impact and we would look to, to do that further as well, possibly. Great. Um, and then looking on the more on the development side, what are the main differences in equipment and design between the lower and higher uh, throughput rate? Uh, great. I'll let Scott answer that one. Um, yep. It's, it's really the internals of the mill building is, is what you're looking at here, right? So we're putting in a second mill next to the old um, thousand ton per day mill. We're putting in bigger uh, scavenger circuit for the zinc and lead. Um, circuit and we've got bigger flotation cells and coming with that is also slightly bigger electrical equipment so it's really the internals of the mill building uh, the road itself really doesn't change um, there will be slightly and it's very slightly higher concentrate amount of trucks going out so we'll be putting in additional pullouts but the road design remains unchanged um, the mine obviously um, the design of the 1600 tons per day mine um, is pretty similar to the 2400 tons per day mine. We're just squeezing more out. So we're really squeezing it up to the limit. So really uh, the majority of the changes are in the internals of the mill building itself. I hope that answers, answers your question. Right. Thanks, sir. Um, and what are the uh, permitting requirements for the higher throughput rate? So the the permit are mainly you know modifications to the two primary you know permits that we have, which are a, a land use permit and a water license, uh, as it relates to again the property as as you know Scott mentioned there too. There's really you know um, you know very minimal change to to the road other than you know higher you know per day or you know general uh, traffic on on the road, uh, and and having. Uh, you know, just again, just gotten through the sort of first stage gating of of that that permitting process, um, and again, this is just strictly for site. For example, one of the differences is you know is that the you know the the, the waste rock stockpile will, will obviously expand more quickly, and the and the design of that waste rock stockpile is is slightly different than before. So that's that's part of what we're permitting, um, you know. But overall, you know, from our point of view, and and so far, um, you know. Uh, 
you know, confirmed. I mean, it is, they are, um, you know, from a, from a science point of view, you know, relatively, you know, minor changes to, to the overall design and therefore the permitting, but maybe Scott, I don't know if there's anything to add to that. Well, yeah, I mean, um, as Rowan mentioned, we've come through the EA decision, which is a big part of it. So it's really just a case of time now that I don't see anything else that's going to hold us up or be controversial at all in getting the final um, approvals of the expansion um, application. It's just time. And um, we we're looking at when I look at the schedule, it's probably mid next year, if not before that. So it, it lines up with the construction. It's just a matter of it running its course in time. Um, but yeah, as Rowan said, it, there's, there's not much change. It's really the, the waste drop pile due to the increased volume, but no, no changes on the road or really the majority of everything else on site. It's, it's, really the, it's really the areas we talked about. Okay, sure. And uh, one question here, you recently announced a plan to complete an updated PEA. Um, would you expect the timing on that to be? Why not just go straight to an updated feasibility study? Yeah, great. No, thanks for the question. The timing is expected to be very quick, which is part of the reason for undertaking it, um, uh, you know, versus just waiting for the updated fees. We expect to have, um, you know, the, the results of that PA out by early, you know, early next month, early to mid next month, uh, along followed very quickly with, with the, you know, the full report within, you know, much less than the, the normal 45 days. So we expect within, you know, you know, a, a, you know, less than two month, or approximately just you know two month process from you know from announcement that that we'll put out the PA and and versus you know doing the fee the feasibility um, you know is you know, sort of in the eight month seven to nine month range um, you know with potential for for you know for for uh, uh, and it's something we're still looking at the exact the exact timeline of that but but it's definitely at least a, you know at least a seven month exercise and and so part of the reason of getting this out is we've been talking about a, a 2400 ton per day for some time we obviously obviously just started the permitting and yet you know we we you know we haven't uh you know be able to share up to now you know with with the market and, and other stakeholders you know what does that project look like in terms of economics and and sort of detailed numbers around it so, so our goal is to to uh you know to get this sort of numbers and information out out to the market you know quickly and in, in particular terms of timing, you know, in time for, you know, a number of, you know, conferences and other things that happen over the next, you know, really the whole fall season and into early next year and, and allow us to uh, to be able to talk about that with and, and get a wider audience of, of people who may not have heard of the project I and mean, we can we can explain, you know, what it is we're, we're currently working on without with being able to talk with some more specifics than, than obviously, uh, you know, Peter was challenged by being, <laughs> being able to only talk in some some generalities. So so that's what we're that's what we're looking to do. And Great. use that as a springboard for, for an updated fees. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then kind of a general overview, uh, sort of corporate strategy question here, but long term, what is the strategy for the company? Do you want to become a, a mining company, perhaps other acquire other projects? Or would you look to uh, to merge or sell to a, a producer? Well, I mean, speaking on behalf of shareholders, I'll you know, always look at all options. We, we will always look at all options for for what enhances most shareholder value and, and whether, you know, whatever that may be, strategic, M&A, both sides of an A and, and so on. But but my personal goal, and I think, um, you know, you know, you, you can see a bit from my background that I, I, I guess, mentioned briefly, but but 15 years at, at uh, you know, building Gold Corp and you know a variety of M and A transactions and, and spin outs. Certainly, my you know my personal preference, and I think the team here as well. Uh, you know, is really to build this mine, operate it, and, and build a you know a strong you know potentially say mid tier you know base metals company and and growing and and then you see how that that uh, you know that metal mix goes over time. I, I you know I'd expect you know we have a strong silver component and being able to enhance and add to that. There's you know there are a number of polymetallic projects with a strong silver component. Um, and that would be something that would be, you know, you know, very interesting to 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 grow. But at any point in time, obviously looking at what what enhances the best, you know, best value. But but uh, um, I guess what I said at the very very beginning, part of the answer is, you know, you know, in studying, uh, you know, world class mining companies. I think you know we can all agree that that they're built around, you know, typically one or maybe more. You know, world class deposits that really anchored that that company, and I think this. I think uh, we, we strongly believe that you know, you know, once built the Prairie Creek mine and the cash flows that uh, that it can generate, and, and you know, Peter's discussed is you know, can you know, you know, we can really build 
you know, world class, you know, a world class company, you know, around it. Is it, you know, and and again, start with sort of at least start with um, you know, medium term goals of, you know, say a mid tier, mid tier producer, but but potentially growing. So great. Great. Um and then kind of just to review, what uh, what news would we expect to have over the coming weeks from Norzink? Sure, thanks. Yeah, I mean, I think the, uh, I mean, it's importantly over the coming, well, I'll say month at least to give give uh, Scott a bit of time, but, but you know, the PA results, uh, and then, you know, and then we're moving into the full PA. Um, you know, we, we expect some developments in, in some discussions with with, with uh, off takers or potential or off taker at least, um, you know, that, that would be, uh, uh, would be news. Another significant, well, I should say preceding that potentially would be, you know, results on the, this met the microprobe analysis, met study testing on, on mercury specifically. Um, you know, we'll have those results. Those again will, will lead to, you know, we believe from our discussions with, with a number of, of off takers that, uh, you know, some very detailed information that they'd be looking for. I mean, one person put it at, that just this microprobe alone would 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 sort of tell them eighty percent of what they wanted to know. But in addition, about mercury that isn't already you know information that we published. So, so we think that'll be significant in in get in you know in getting us there. Then then it would be um, you know potentially around you know um, additional um, you know progress and commitments making on on the winter road and and certainly. Uh, without having gone into you know the numbers, I mean we'll, we are looking for we'll, we'll be looking by then for you know for additional financing to be able to make that full commitments for this winter road, um, and and uh, and I guess then some of the other you know catalysts that we mentioned in the more sort of six months you know range, but yeah certainly in the short term those are probably the key ones. Oh, couldn't can't hear you. Oops, sorry about that. No Just a uh, background noise. I muted myself. Um, I think that's all the questions we have for today. Yeah. That gives us a great, uh, a great overview. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, thank the folks from uh, Norzinc again for presenting today, and thank you everyone out there for tuning in. Uh, just a reminder that Red Cloud Securities will be back tomorrow, Tuesday, September 20, 21st, when our webinar series continues as we present Cucho Copper at 2 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, have a great day. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, all. Appreciate it.